Welcome to Toolbox. In this video, we'll review the Edit tool. This is a tool you may be using the most in composing your embroidery. It is located on the left of your screen. It is the pencil with the gear. When you click on it, an accordion menu of commands will show up on the right-hand side. And I will walk through those in order. So you can see on my screen right now, I have a little flower and two letters. If In order for commands, to become available, typically you'll have to have your embroidery object or objects selected. So if I select the flower, notice that I now in the copy delete group commands, I can now add this, therefore I can copy. And whenever you use the copy command, the second copy, if you want, the new item will be offset so that you can spot it easily and then move it to where you want it. And when that is done, you can also uh, repeat the command as many times as you want and if you decide that you don't need a certain element remember that you have to select it first before you can delete it and that would be the trash can now once you select let's say these two flowers you can with the shift key you can add to your selection and select both of them you can now group them now these two become one item and they will stay together in that position relative to each other. You can move these, this pair on the screen, but they will stay together and will become glued if you want. They'll be grouped. You can ungroup at any time. Next, we have the scale and rotate commands. And again, you need to select something in order to scale and rotate. Now, you can rotate manually with the handles that are surrounding any selection. The round control is for rotation and the square controls are for changing the size, resizing either vertically, horizontally, or and so in height and width, or both at the same time while maintaining proportions. But if you need to have a specific size, so if I return, if I undo and return to the previous size of this letter, if it needs to be a specific height, let's say it needs to be one and a half inch tall, I could type 1.5 directly in the height field and that will make it so. By default, you see this padlock icon is highlighted, therefore the proportions are locked together. If I change the height, the width will be changed by the same percentage. If you want to change the shape and the size of an object to specific measurements of both height and width, you can unlock and then I could make my letter a little wider for this height and you could see that it would still look like an E, but I could control the exact dimensions that way. As a rule, for most things, we want to keep the proportions, and so you will keep that locked. And if that is the case, you only need to enter either a new measurement for the height or the width, because if you try both, it will change a second time. You can rotate to a specific number of degrees. So if you know it needs to be a 33 degree rotation, you could grab the manual control here and carefully drag it down until it says 33 or minus 33 if you go below the horizon line like this. But that's, can be, that can be a little tricky. So instead, what you can do is you could say, I want to rotate this minus 33 degrees. And when you press enter, it is done for you exactly. So there are times that entering the number is easier. I will return my E to its original state. And now the next is mirror image. And mirror image, as you can see, is pretty straightforward. You need to select something first, of course. If nothing is selected, the controls are not available. If you select something first, you can now flip it sideways. And if I use the F instead, you can see that I can flip it top to bottom. And you can apply this command as many times as you want. If you decide to revert later on, you could always uh, issue the command again. It would cancel the first application. Now for the alignment, notice that my two letters right now are centered a different size, but they're centered along their vertical middle. If I select both letters using the shift key and clicking on the second letter, I could now align them to the bottom that would force them to the bottom or to the top. Now be aware that if I align both to the left, 
they will overlap and there are times you will click on the wrong button for what you want no problem all you have to do is click on undo remember that undo is your friend so if you were to align two elements and you want to center them there is an easy way to do that you select both and then if you say align the vertical centers and the horizontal centers if you click on both of these tools you will see that both letters now are completely centered against each other now for letters this may not make sense but for flowers a bug or an insect on a flower this may be very useful next is the skew control the skew control once you have an object selected is basically like italics for lettering so you can enter a skew number a, per, a number of degrees let's say 15 degrees and when you press enter that will slant whatever you've selected it does not have to be a letter it could be a flower it could be a house it could be anything now bear in mind that when it comes to skewing less is more as a safe rule a rule of thumb 15 degrees or so is about as far as I usually go when I start and if I want a little more I can always give a little more so that is for skewing side to side and then if you want to skew vertically which we don't do as often but is available you could say I want to skew also vertically and that would slant as well so you can create effects easily with skewing next we have changing settings so in the settings here, if you select an object, in this case, my group of flowers, you can see that whatever is available to be changed will have a white field. That means I can type in. If you see a gray background field, that is a field in which you cannot type. That setting cannot be changed. If I select all, so if I go to my select tool and say select all, and if I go back to edit, and I am still in the change settings. Notice that now, because I have a, a variety of objects, everything selected, I could change the settings. The skinny of it is that typically you do not need to, and typically you probably don't want to. The settings that have been put in there are well tuned for good quality professional grade embroidery. So auto density is good for your stitching, and then you have default underlay, uh, the underlay will be put on, the basting stitches will be put on for you by default and then the pull compensation, the, the values are all in there for you. So as a rule, I will leave this alone and let the embroidery stitch out first as a first test and only if you know how to manipulate those settings would you ever want to go there. But typically I do not need to. There is one last uh, set of settings that you can edit. It is the lettering fill patterns. It's a nice touch. Instead of having a plain step fill, which is sometimes called as tatami fill, for your lettering, you see that you can add a little bit of texture to your letters. And this comes in very handy if you do banners with larger letters. If you do pennants, for instance, you can actually give more dimension to your lettering and make it more interesting. And you can see there's a variety to choose from. All you have to do is pick the lettering, whether it's a single letter or a whole line of text, and change the lettering fill that you want and that's it the only way to know really which one you like will probably be to do a test stitch out so in a case like this you could uh, copy and multiply that letter on clone that letter on your screen and then apply the different fills that seem interesting to you and just stitch this out and then circle the one you like and keep using that one and that is it for the editing tool